If A is 3, 6, 7, 8, and B is 5, 7, 9, 10, A, this is union B. It means or because if I try and draw the word and with it, it looks stupid. So it is or. So if we're in A or B, you list it, right? So or often means more. So it'd be 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. P is 2, 4, 8, 16. Factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, 6. R is 4, 8, 12, 16. Which pair of sets are disjoint? means nothing in common, right? And you take the intersection of them. So Q and R, which is C. Because Q has 1, 2, 3, 6. R has 4, 8, 12, 16. They have nothing in common. Doesn't want the intersection. Intersection, if you forget what symbol it is, you'll have a formula sheet. I have to buy the plastic sheets to put it in. That's why you haven't got your formula sheet. They're on my desk, but I haven't put them together yet. So we want the intersection between M and N, so it has to be in M and in N. So 3 and 5. A. What does this little symbol mean? The number of elements in, right? So I want the number of elements that are not in N, but are in U. So U has 9. N has 3, so how many are not in? And left to right, oh, it's still in left to right. Okay. This is a hint because people will be like, I don't know how to do this question. I'm like, you have to use the information about it. So here it says, use the following information to answer the next two questions. So factors of 16. Thanks, Board. Uh, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. Factors of 8 are 1, 2, 4, 8. Even numbers less than 10. This is the trick. Even numbers less than 10 are 8, 6, 5, that's not true, <laughs> 4, oops, 2, 0, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, Etc. Right? Technically? So, what is the set of A or B? So, it has to be an A or an B. So, if it's in either, it gets listed. So, 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. What can you say about um, B and A pertaining to subsets? Which one is a subset of which? Is A a subset of B or is B a subset of A? Yeah. Right, because you have to be a smaller set to be the first one, right? So B is 1, 2, 4, 8, and A contains 1, 2, 4, 8, but also 16. So B is a subset of A. Now here we want the number of elements in A and B and C. So it would just be how many? How many are in A, B? Yes. Libby's giving me hand signals. So, yep. Yeah. In the universal set of natural numbers, what's the complement of the multiples of three? Where do the natural numbers start at? One, and then it just includes everything but three, six, nine, twelve, whatever, right? So one, two, not three, four, five, not six, seven, eight, not nine. And then we're gonna flip back to our notes. Did we finish three? Which one did we stop at? I don't even remember. I thought we did that one. Yes. All right. So with two circle Venn diagrams, we need to remember that we must do the inside first, smallest first. Remember? And we're going to do some little reminders. What shape is this? What shape does this represent? The eyeball, and it represents what? Intersection. And intersection. 
It's very helpful when we get the three circle Venn diagrams. See, we can make it up. What's this? The snowman. What does it represent? Union. What else? And it's a snowman because it's Now these are just the singles, right? So like, if you were talking about math, or if you were talking about physics or whatever, it would just be that circle, chemistry, right? Now you always have to fill it from smallest to biggest. So you have to do the ands, then the singles, then the ors. The snowman should be the very last thing you fill in, because you can only be missing one little piece of information to fill it in. So you're doing the and, the in-between, right? The overlap, then the singles, and then the snowman is the very last thing you can do. Okay? So we're going to look at this one. It says, in a survey of 400 households. So what is that? Starts with a T. Rhymes with total. Total. Good job. And the total, our Venn diagram, remember, always has a box around it. The total is going to be what all those things add up to in that box, right? There are 285 tablets, 320 <coughs> printers, and 63 did not have tablets or printers. Uh-oh, what did they not give me? The middle. There will be one of these on your test, often on the diploma, where they don't give you your middle. But they do have to give you the other pieces of information, okay? They have to give you the total, they have to give you the singles, so tablets and printers, and they have to give you the neither. So I'm going to go tablets here and printers here. Okay, everyone put their pens down once they're done writing that. Okay. So if I said to come up to the front of the class and, and I said to you, if you are in chemistry, you would put a C down on a piece of paper and throw it in the bin, okay? If you were in math, you'd put an M down and throw it in the bin, okay? So who's in chemistry and math? Okay. So we would go chemistry, <laughs> math. That's one human, but we put in <coughs> two pieces of paper. We agree? Okay. Anyone else in chemistry and math? Oh, okay. All right, putting a chemistry and a math. And anyone else in chemistry and math? So the rest of you would have M's, okay? You would each put in just an M for yourself. We agree? Except for Lauren. She's actually in the wrong classroom. She's not taking math either, because I need one person not to take it. So she's like, nothing. She's like, no, I'm just here for fun. I'm actually not taking math. We're gonna put, she said, it's not true. She's here for math, but we're gonna use it for, for, for none. Just for fun, true, true. Cool, cool. And the rest of you would put in M's. M's, math, 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 right? So ultimately, in the end here, would we have more papers than the class or the same amount of papers as the class? We have more, right? Because we have two people who put in math and chemistry, two pieces of paper, right? And we still included Lauren, who did, is just here for fun. She's not taking math. We needed someone not to take math, so Lauren in it. So um, we're going to have more than our fair share, correct? Well, how many more we have will tell us how many people are what? And? Chemistry. So if we actually take these and we add them all up, right? All the nuns, the people who are neither, the people who are in math, and the people who are in chemistry, if we add up all these papers, the amount that there are more than this class is how many are in both, correct? 
because you put in extra papers, right? So the extra amount of papers means you're just counting that person twice. They're in both, yes? Does that make sense? So if I take these people who are up here, I need to put this marker away from here. I'm going to use another white one. I'm just not going to see it happen. Okay. Um, so we had 400 people total, correct? Just like we know how many total were in this class. So you need to have the singles, the neither, and the total. We agree? So if we went to this one, 285 people said, I have a tablet. So 285. Put in tablet papers. T, 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 right? Then 320 put in P papers. P, 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 correct? Then 63 put in like ends. Neither, 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 neither. I have neither of those things. We agree? So if we take the singles and the neither and we add them all up, we're going to get 8, and then we're going to get 16, and then we're going to get 668. What? There are 400 people total that we surveyed. That's a problem. Is it? Or what does it just tell us? How many extra are there? 200 and 28, right? So if I take, what was it, 400? What was it, 400? Yeah. 268. So if it's 400, I have 268. That must have done what then? Put in a T and a P, correct? So that's where you can find the ands. So if you have the singles and the neithers and then the total, you can take the single ones, add them up, because they put in a T and a P, a T, sorry, or a P, or maybe both, and the neithers, and add them all up. And if it's more than your total, that's how much extra, how many people put in two pieces of paper. So this would be 268 in the middle. Remember, this Venn diagram, when I add up all the numbers, they should add up to 400. We agree? If they don't, you oopsied. So, can we figure out the people who did who put tablets only? Who put T's in only? How can we figure that out? How many did tablets? How many put in T's? 285, we agree. How many are ready in the T circle? 268. So what do I just do? Subtract them. So, what's 285 to 268? It's 2 to get me to 70, and then 15 to get me to 85, so that's 17. So, 17 had tablets only. That's it. 17 out of that whole bunch, right? Now, how many had printers only? How can we figure that out? You take 320 and subtract 268. How much does that give us? How much? 320 minus 268. Yeah. 70 would be 2. 70 to 20 is 50, so it's 52. Are we done? No, we should have a four spot. Yes, what do we have to do? We have the 63 people on the outside, too. Remember, when you have a two-circle Venn diagram, four spots need to be filled. Two-circle Venn diagrams have four spots. Three in the circles, one on the outside. So every two-circle Venn diagram, four spots should be filled. So we have 63 on the outside. Now, how can we double-check if we didn't make a mistake? Add it all up. Add it all up. So everyone, type it in. You should be getting what? 400. If you get 400... I want you to answer this question. So this one says tablets and printers. What shape is and? The eyeball, right? So how many num How many of them are there? 268. Tablets but not printers. That's a fancy way of saying tablets only. How many tablets only were there? 17. Tablets or printers? Yeah, because it's just the snowman. 337? Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay, this one says, in a class of 30 grade 12 students, 20 take math, 10 take physics, and 4 take neither. How many take math and physics? 
This is very much exactly the same as the previous one, except instead of tablets and printers, it's math and physics. So try this one out. In this one, we have a class of grade uh, 12 students, 20 in a class of 30, sorry. There's my total. 20 takes math, that's a single. 10 takes physics, that's a single. 4 take neither. So I need four pieces of information in order to find an and. I need the singles, the neither, and then the total, correct? So if we think about it, 20 put in math papers, papers with an M on it, okay? 10 put in papers with a P on it, and 4 put in papers with an N on it. So that's 34. However, we only have 30 students in the class, correct? So if we take 34 and we subtract 30, we get 4 in both, correct? And you have to be able to explain that. So if this is like a justify question on a diploma, you'd have to say, okay, well, if there's 20 people in math and 10 in physics and 4 in neither, that means there's 34 who are in total take those, do those things, right? There's only 30 students, so that means that there's 4 that must be both. Okay, so I know the answer is four, and that's great, but I told you I wanted you to fill in the Venn diagram anyway for practice. So we have a math, we have a physics, we have four outside, and we have three more places to fill. We need to fill four on the two-circle Venn diagram. The middle gets a four. How many are in math only? 16, because you did 20 minus four, right? Because in this circle we need 20. And how many are in physics only? Six. I didn't ask that, but I wanted you to practice it. So it says, how many students take math and physics? So we'd say four students take math and physics. Then we're going to flip over. So it says, in an Alberta school, there are 65 grade 12s. Of these students, 23 play volleyball, 26 play basketball. There are 31 who do not play either sport. The following Venn diagram represents the number of students. Using this Venn diagram, answer these questions. Try it out. See how you do. So this is one where I didn't give you the and again. So we have to do 23 put in a V paper, 26 put in a B paper, 31 put in an N paper, and if I add that up, I get 80. And there are 65 people. So how many doubled up? 15. So we put the 15 in the middle. How many are in volleyball only? 23 minus 15, which is 8. And then in basketball only? 11. Should be 26. And the outside? 31. Now I can move on and answer any questions because four spots are filled in. And on every two-circle Venn diagram, four, four spots should be filled in. Sue plays volleyball only. Now we can answer questions. Eight. Basketball only. Eleven. Both volleyball and basketball. Fifteen. So remember, you're just literally, if you're putting in little papers with those letters on it, right? Same thing. Okay. Okay. Example 8. So we're going to illustrate these using a Venn diagram. So the universal set is 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, 15. Do you see up here? These are just how many people are in them, correct? When we are given elements, we're going to do an element Venn diagram. When you do an element Venn diagram, you have to put a dot behind each number, and there's going to be more than one number per space, right? You're going to have all the numbers that fit. So we know in this box is the universal set. So every single one of these numbers in U should appear somewhere in this box, whether it's in the circle or just in the box. We know that we have set A and set B. Now, which numbers are in A and B? 6 and 12. So that's going to go in the middle of our Venn diagram, in the AND portion. So when they have a dot behind them or when there's more than one number in the Venn diagram, that tells you it's an element, not how many are there, right? So in A, A only, I would have the 3, the 9, and the 15. 
So in the A circle, I should technically have all five numbers, which I do. Correct? Now in the B only part, I should have the 2, the 4, the 8, the 10, and the 14. Am I done, though? I still need the ones that are in the universal set, but not in those circles, correct? So the universal set has two, so does circles three, so does the circles four, so does the circles six, so does the circles eight, so does circles nine, ten, uh, twelve, fourteen, and fifteen. Wait a second. All those circles cover all the numbers. So what do I put on the outside? Actually nothing, because we're listing elements. You don't put a zero when you're doing an element Venn diagram, because if you put a zero, that means that a zero actually sits out there. The number zero, correct? You can put a zero when we were doing these ones back here, which had the total number of things. We could put a zero here. That means there's none, right? But on a set one with the actual number stated, we don't want to put a zero because zero with a dot is the number zero, and it doesn't appear in the universal set. So here it says determine the number of elements and label the set with set notation, which we did. Um, so what are the ones in set A? Well, we have them already. So what's the number of elements in set A? How many are in set A? Five. Number two, in set A but not in set B. So how we would write that is set A but not, but not is like an and, but not in set B. That's how we would write it. So A and not B is actually A only, right? So how many were in A only? Three. In, I didn't mean to put that here, sorry. <laughs> I have an A. In set B would just be B. How many are in set B? Seven. Because the whole B circle. In set B, but not set A. So set B and not A is the exact same thing as saying B only, right? So how many are in B only? Five. The 2, 4, 8, 10, 14. Set A and set B. What am I doing? I don't know where to get us. It's the end of the day. That's what's happening here. There are two. There are two in A and B. In set A or B, A or B is what symbol? Or what shape, sorry? The union, but also what shape on a Venn diagram? The snowman. So we count up all the ones in the snowman. There's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think this is supposed to be a complement. Does yours have a complement on it? No. That's a typo. Sorry. How many are not in A? Five. Could you cover up all of A with your hand? How many are not in A? One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to flip over. So here, there are 38 students in the grade 12 class. The number of students in the drama club and the band are illustrated in the Venn diagram. Use the diagram to answer the following questions. Write um, proper set notation. So for example, it says how many students are in both the drama club and band? You would say... Um, N of drama club and band. I was just trying to get you to do set notation. And how many are in the drama club and band? In that band diagram. And is what shape? The eyeball. So how many are there? Eight. What is that Venn diagram missing? Outside. The outside. How would we find it? Exactly. 11 plus 8 is 19, plus 6 is 25, and subtract it from 
38. Yeah, so 38 minus 25 is? 38. And you answer all these questions, and we're going to go through them. And then I want you guys to try this one. Okay? So you're doing 9 and 10. So B says, how many students are in drama club but not in band? What's that a fancy way of saying? Drama club only. So if we want to write it as a set, we'd go drama club but not band, right? And that's just a fancy way of saying drama only, right? So how many are in drama only? 11. Um, then two here says, how many are in band but not in drama club? So it would be band but not drama club. That's the number of people in it. So band but not drama is the same as saying band only, correct? So how many are in band only? Six. It's that little piece that's by itself, right? Then this one says, how many students are in the drama club? So this would just be N of D, which seems easier when people get it wrong. How many are in drama? 19? In the drama club, there should be 19, 11, and 8, right? How many are in band? Band is 8 and 6. Can we take the band circle, which is 14? And then here it says, how many students are in at least one of drama club or band? That just means the whole snowman, right? They're in drama club or band, or they could be in both. At least one means both as well, okay? So that's just a fancy way of saying the number in D and or B. How many were in the snowman again? Pardon? 25. And then here it says, how many students are in neither drama nor band? So basically, this is the way I find it to write it the easiest. So they want what's not in the snowman, correct? Everything but the snowman is what I want, yes? So how do I write the snowman? Well, the snowman is or, so D or B. But I want what's not in the snowman, correct? So if I write the snowman out, I just go, not in the snowman. That's the easiest way to write the set, just not. Snowman, right? Snowman is the or. So how many were not in the snowman? 13. And then this one says, Anna surveyed 45 students, so that's the total. About their favorite sports, she recorded the results below. Hockey, soccer, neither hockey nor soccer. So once again, they didn't give me the and. We agree? So we take our hockey, the H stickers, and we add it to the soccer stickers, and we add it to the neither stickers, and we actually get 50. But how many students were there? 45. So if I go 50 minus 45, I have 5 in both. So, how many liked hockey and soccer? Five. How do I find the rest? How many liked hockey only? How do I do that? 20 minus 5, and I get 15. How many liked soccer only? Nine, because you get 14 minus 5. And on the outside, 16. When we do a Venn diagram, four spots, we can fill it. So here it says, determine how many students liked only hockey or only soccer. So what two numbers am I going to add up? 15 and 9, so 24. I don't have to show the set notation because it didn't ask me to. It just wants an answer, right? So I don't have to show the set notation at all. You can draw the label of that diagram to show the data. So in Google Classroom, I posted the pages um, right from the book. If you want, you can grab a book from the rest. You can't take them with you, but you can use it right now if you'd like if you don't want to go into Google Classroom. But in the, um, the books at the back, we're working on pay the homework from page 23 to 26. 
if you want to grab a workbook. If you don't want to grab a workbook, I just posted them into Google Classroom. You can open it up that way as well. It's on February 6th homework. It is not due tomorrow. It is due in two days. I'll give you some time tomorrow to work on it as well. But I want you to work as hard as you can today on it. If you want to work on it tonight, but you can. It doesn't matter. But I'll give you a bit of class time tomorrow. But it will be due on the 8th. Okay? So, work.